Okay. Um, first of all, I'd just like to welcome all the visitors. Um, we'd like to take the time to welcome all the visitors about Vagatele today. If, you, if it's the first time you're visit, visiting Lighthouse, can you please raise your hand so that they can give you um, uh, connect cards? Do you have any first time visitors? Let's put you in the front. So during offering, please drop the connect cards. I think they've given you pens. You can complete them. During uh, offering, you can uh, drop the connect cards in the baskets, in the collection baskets for us. Uh, we would like to also welcome all our online viewers who are streaming using social media. Which my eyesight is bad. To all partners in the church, thank you very much for supporting the ministry and dedicating yourselves to the ministry. Um, Lighthouse really loves you and cares for you. So the vision of the church is being an impacting uh, community of faith, and the founding scripture of the church is in Matthew 5, verses 14 to 16, which reads as follows, you are the light of the world, a city that is set on the hill that cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand and gives it light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. The motto of the church hasn't changed. It's let your light shine. Okay. Amen. Um, I think on the screen they've been um, uh, broadcasting the, the vision of the church this year is being the year of impact. Uh, which um, should resonate with all of us and Ijumelu Zampundis throughout the year have been around uh, cementing in our hearts how we can be of great impact in the community. Uh, appreciation and gratitude to all the ministry helps. Uh, Pastor Klaba and his dear wife would like to appreciate all our volunteers from various ministries offering their time in the various departments that they are volunteering in. And to all the saints who are financially supporting uh, the Passover conference, we'd like to say thank you again. And to all the saints that uh, supported the bereavement families, we'd like to say uh, thank you. Thank you, um, singer, singer Tracy. Uh, in terms of activities, but before I get to activities, I have a thank you card. I think for everybody should be aware that we had three families that were bereaved um, not so long ago. And I have a thank you card from the Matango family, which says to the Lighthouse Community Center, we'd like to thank you for your prayers, your generosity and support during our difficult time and bereavement um, is greatly appreciated. May the good Lord bless you from Matlango family. And I also have a thank you from the Zwane and Ndogu family who are also bereaved. I'd like to say thank you to the church for supporting them um, and being with them in the, through the difficult time. Um, activities for the month. Um, we are already on the 16th. So today we are supposed to do the raffle. So the reason I'm here is to announce to you that the raffle is postponed. So the raffle is postponed. So we all remember the reason for the raffle from the Ministry of um, Social Care was to collect funds that we will use when we're supporting bereaved families. So we haven't sold all our tickets. And um, we were about to do the raffle and then Ufundisi said, let us finish selling all the tickets so that we we remain aligned to why we were doing the raffle in the first place. So, um, and there's people who want who are saying they they don't have they haven't got the opportunity to buy the tickets. So we're just extending so that we give people extra time to buy the tickets. And those who want to increase their chances of winning, we've also increased the number of prizes. It was initially three, so now it's five. Yeah, well, so it's now more prices. So if you've bought one ticket, I would urge you to buy another one so to increase your chances of winning since we've extended the date. So the, um, the raffle we've extended to month end, um, I think it's the 28th. So 28th, uh, during the baptismal, the baby dedication, we'll just, before or after, we'll see. We'll just have a, we'll ask for a slot and then we'll do the raffle. So I urge you guys, please, 
you guys are learning, buy the tickets. It's for a good cause. It's for a good cause. And I must say, the prices are great. I was really jealous because I'm putting the prices together. I'm like, oh, I'm giving these tickets to other people. I wish I could get, I could buy, but I can't buy. So yeah, so the, the, the raffle is extended. So take your chances and, um, and, and, and buy so that you get more chances of winning. Uh, on the 20th of April, Sisterhood um, will be taking place on the 20th from 9 to 1. Are there any Sisterhood women in the house? Ah, the response. Sisterhood ladies. So on the 20th of April, 9 to 1 o'clock here at church. And then on the 26th, April, Singles Fellowship. Any singles? So Umfudisi has singles. I'm not single, that's why I'm not. So any singles? <laughs> so singles, you should be excited. There's going to be a, a Singles Fellowship on the 26th of April from 6 until 9. Umfudisi has shared on the group, the program. Um, it's going to be exciting. Uh, so, I, because somebody that is going to be saying, I wish I was. Because, <laughs> you know, I wish I was. I'm not going to come for this. Not so too long. Pen. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. That's a great one. Yeah. So, singles, please don't miss this opportunity um, to fellowship. Uh, on the 26th, and then on the 28th, there's a baby dedication like I've briefly indicated from 6 until 9 on the 28th of April. Uh, also, we know that we have E Delight Cafe shop. Delight Cafe will be opened, it's always open after church. Please visit the cafe, uh, it's getting a bit chilly now these days, so they're serving coffee, um, but they also serve. Uh, cold drinks, liquid fruit, fizzy drinks, and snacks. So please support the Delight Cafe. And then on Wednesdays, we have standing meeting, uh, standing uh, service on Wednesday, which is the prayer and Bible study from 8 until 7. I will encourage all of you to, uh, hey, hey, that's correct, until 6. <laughs> um, 6 until 7, sorry, I'm thinking 1800. It's six and until seven. Um, I'd encourage everybody to attend. It's a very informative um, uh, service. You're going to learn a lot more than what we learned during church. So if you are, you, I don't even want to say if you're interested in learning the Bible. Everybody should be interested in in knowing more about the Bible. Mfundi um, shares very important um, scriptures and how we dissect them for 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 easy consumption and understanding. So I would like urge everyone to to join us. Uh, on Sundays, intercession starts at half past eight, and then the main service starts at nine. Um, communication details, if you'd like to contact the church, we have a cell phone number, which is also available on WhatsApp, is 079-964-5774, or on email, which is admin at lhcc.org.za. Um, the church is also available on all social medias. Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. So follow the church and enjoy the service. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Bazalwan. Yeah, Bazalwan, she says, Sonto and Shemu, Hallelujah, Sizo Mushe, as Hallelujah. Yeah, Kanak Zwala Maj, Hallelujah. Come on, Lighthouse, Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Can we all rise uh, in the house? Um, so we have a tradition of greeting each other. Oh, Jesus. We have a tradition of greeting each other. So you don't greet the person you came with. Ne? You greet the other person that you did not come with. Yeah. So let's greet each other. One, two, three, go. Yes. 
Leadership uh, and everyone. I'm to need a footy for the ends of this. I think I'm just going to do sort of continuation of what I said last week. Uh, so, <laughs> so, can we open our Bible story? Uh, 
Can you open up my Bible in the book of Matthew, chapter 25? I think it's a popular scripture. Uh, most of you or all of us know it. 1490. I'm just going to read a few verses. Um, I'm not going to read Wonke. Just going to extract, just so I don't spend a lot of time exegete, or completely exegete. Um, the entire text, so without wasting time. So, I think from verse fourteen, let's see. For it is like a man. So, for it is like a man about to go on a journey. He called, <clears throat> he called his own servants and entrusted his possession to them. So, the story is about Ujesu, um, Ufundesa, his student. Actually, he's doing some sort of a simile, comparing. The kingdom, overjang is how the kingdom looks like, or oh, the Injani kingdom, and also referring to Genesis 1 26, because where Ungulungul, Ashiao, Adam, no ever, and leave them to, and leave them to, 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 so I'm not going to spend time because the, I'm not interested actually in, in the two gentlemen, the one that was given five talents and the other one was given two. I'm actually interested in the one that who, <laughs> who took the money because who took the money and dug it. So in finance, they know what's the hole in, 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 finance, in financial terms. So I'm just going to read to verse 26. This is master replied to him. So this is now the man coming back to the master and saying, Master, I know you, um, from verse 24, says, the man who received one talent, who, who received less money, also approached and said, Master, I know you, you are harsh, you are a harsh man, reaping where you haven't sown, gathering where you haven't scattered seed. So I was afraid, cynical person, I was afraid, and went off and hid your money, and hid the talent in the ground. So, and then the master replied, he says his master replied um, to him, he says, you evil, you evil, lazy servant. If you knew that I reap where I haven't sown and gathered where I haven't scattered, then shouldn't you have deposited the money in the bank where at least it's totally interest? That's the master saying to this guy. So then you should, you should have deposited the money and the, okay, and I have received my money back with interest when I returned. So it's the same thing happened. Ungulungulu yahambu yabashia and utolu satan has taken over. Or in yoga rather, say it has taken over. So it's the same thing, management. So it says, take, take, take the talent from him. Take the talent from him, the one, the, the one, or oh, 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 dug it down. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. So there's a the story that one of his five who, who took the money and put it into work, actually Ungulungulu entrusted him again with another five. So it's a little bit of 200 and then he entrusted and watched them. Because the part that I like is that Ungulungulu, when he gives us resources, actually, he watches us, he watches us to see how we manage his Whether, 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 it, by us giving, or by us giving 10%, whatever that is, is in Nigel and I, but Ngulungulu make sure that the, the pressure is on us with the 90%, if we speak in terms of 10%, Niaz, like I, we don't, as he, as he turns in the 10%, but if you're speaking in terms of the 10, Ngulungulu watches us over the 90%. So the pressure is there on the 90%, because Nala, the master says, Ubanige according to their ability, according to how they would manage. So it's not like unige zumunda ngazi uguti uzo manager ganja. So ungulungulu when he gives us those resources must sebenza, whether be it paid, he trusts us that we multiply so that sizo nigeela and so that we can bless others as well. So the, if we don't do that, you see Bible, the master says, the master says to him, 
to, to, to this guy who has one talent. For everyone has more will be given. So not only when you are lazy, or you become lazy, but they will give it to the others who have more. So you're still going to suffer. So the one who has more will come, will have more than again. So it's, it's, it's exponential growth. So that's why it's important for us when we, when we must we must also ask God so that he can help us to manage our resources. Because the, the truth of the matter is that our salaries or our income, it, that's the only thing so far, okay, without easing, our financial wealth because of how we manage it. The reason why we're so indebted or we so we keep on being indebted, not only because we lack faith, but we, we are cynical just like this guy. We don't trust, we don't trust the sonto. We say the sonto lifuni mali, like just like any other abantabanga kolo. But sonto lifuni mali. But I've never seen anyone saying in this gentleman's club, he was humble, but he, these ladies are a funny man. So it's not like you are handsome that they like you. No, they're looking for a man. So, with that being said, <coughs> with, with that being said, I just want to say and emphasize what Jesus, even in, 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 in other texts, the, the reason why he. He ties this thing to Imad. And because he understands the importance of Imad, and because he says there's only two masters in this world, it's God and money. So if you're not serving God, then you are saving money. Tell us just repent from serving Imad because we are supposed to be serving God. Um, thank you. And Zokulega, before standards, Sinigela Ngelezi. Three, it's EFT, and Mzoifago ma basket, and oh no, swipe mix, swiping machine. Sorry. So Mzutanda za before ba sitatum nigelo. Father God, we thank you for your word that has gone forth. We thank you, Ngulu Kulona Manlong, for reminding us that we're supposed to be good stewards in what you have given us. We understand what the hundred percent of it is all yours. Our economy belongs to you. You are everything to us. Tina, we are just good stewards. Help us, oh God, as we try and, 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 and as we try to manage your resources. Because even though we pray for souls, we don't want to be a destructive church that when we receive the souls, we can manage them. Because if Bible tells us, you keep those people from us. You keep them from coming. Because let you stop the rain in the name of Jesus. Father God, these are your people. Some they love you sincerely, but this financial embarrassment has numbed them, has dwarfed their capabilities. And we thank you, Amen.
meaning that I've become a child because the Bible says we must be like the children so that's why I can see I'm a color girl and they're becoming very emotional because they can connect with the meaning of redemption story amen but 
us, Lord. Thank you, Baba uh, Uswisa, for leading us uh, in taking offering again. It's always amazing how you make the connections, the ability to reveal the word of God uh, in the most simplistic way, even in township lingo. Uh, we thank God for you. May God richly bless you and your family. We really love you. We are crazy about you and your wife. I want us to open the book of Psalms chapter 20. I want us to pray using it. I'm sure my guys will project it on the screen as well. Psalms chapter 20. We use it as our confession of faith this morning. We use it as a blessing that we receive this morning. Can I hear you say amen? Yeah, it's on the screen now. This is what we will declare. Can we read together? May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. Come on, say that's my portion. May the name of Jacob, of God of Jacob, protect you. Say that's my portion. Read with me. Read with me. Let's start from the from the top. See, move your now. Let's read. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of God of Jacob protect you. See, that's my portion. Let's continue reading. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. See, that's how it is with me. I'm not desperate. The Lord will always send help for me. I'm not neglected. The Lord will always send help for me. Let's continue reading. May he, may he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offering. See, that's my portion. I don't give it away without him recognizing it. I take it from his hand, back to his hand, for I am just a steward of his possessions. Let's continue reading. May he give. Say, that's my portion. All the desires of my heart shall be established. They shall be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. All my plans will succeed in the name of Jesus. Let's continue reading. May we shout. In the name of our God. Can we say it one more time? May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of God. May the Lord, say that's my portion. The Lord will grant all my requests. That's my portion. He is not a selfish God. He's a giving God. He meets my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let's read verse six. Now this I know. The Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with victorious power of his right hand. Say that my portion. Let's read verse 7. Some trust, some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord. Say I trust in the name of the Lord. That's my portion. He is reliable. Thus I can trust him. In the name of Jesus. Let's read it again, verse 7. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we trust in the name of our God. Let's continue reading verse 8. They brought, brought to their needs and fall, but we rise and... Come on, say, I rise and I stand firm, for the Lord is my strong tower. I rise and I stand firm. For the Lord is my strong tower. Let's read the last verse. Lord, Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. Say, the Lord will do it. Let's go into worship. Oh, I get corner, no corner, no zayo. Siti, I get conche ngawe, I get konga linga niswa nawe. Si a paramisa, kulungulwe tuna mancha onke. Nage pela simbona ngonche ngawe. Uba nonga linga niswa nawe, kulungulwe tu. 
ona manja onke we no watala izulu no mshaba lithi izwi lakho wadala konke kulo na manja onke konke ukudaliweyo ngiyaphila ngenxa yakho ukunkulunkulu wena wedwa noma bakhona abanye bunkulunkulu kodwa nguwe unkulunkulu ona manja wonke so we worship you this morning lord god almighty we say hallowed be your holy name lord god there is none like you and there is none that can be compared to you in all the other gods in all the other places you remain supreme lord god almighty you remain supreme you are high and lifted up and the trail of your robe fills the temple god who's surrounded by worship the bible says the elders lay down their crowns and say worthy 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 is the lord god almighty we also join in with the angels and say holy 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 is the lord god almighty which was and is and is to come there is none like you in all the earth lord god almighty none like you in the heavens above none like you even here on earth none like you in the belly of the seas none like you heavenly father in the depths of the earth we bless and glorify you you are great and are greatly to be praised and you are to be feared above all other gods for all of these other gods are works of man but you created the heavens and the earth be magnified oh god thank you jesus only you
Full of love. Well, thank you for coming to church this morning. I'm sure we resonate with the same words with my wife and the leadership of the church. Amen. We really appreciate to see you. And we really appreciate you to be involved in the house of the Lord. I did not know that there was a prayer yesterday of a particular group in our church. I just saw people on the cameras. Why is it so busy? <laughs> Only to realize that they had organized themselves just to come and pray. So that you can have a beautiful experience of the Holy Ghost even this morning. Amen. Amen. And I'm sure we'll start announcing every Thursday we're having in this church morning prayer online. Five o'clock to six o'clock is led by my wife. Uh, dearest mom, fun, this is pure love. Tell us, Michelle, is not the same. I'm a mama bonk. I want to thank all those people who are praying for this church, even the ones who are praying in times which are not scheduled for praying at church. We really appreciate you, as a Lord. Amen. Because we can see the Lord helping us through hurdles. Because sometimes the devil, the Bible calls it arrows, he, he sends arrows to distract the work of God. Sometimes you find yourself in situations that you never thought they were big. And then you find small things affecting you. And then the Lord helps you to navigate that space because of the prayers that people are making in this church. We're in a year of great impact how many tickets are we left with uh, for social care? Because we need to sell all these tickets. There are how many? I need 28 people who are going to buy tickets, 50 rands each. Uh, you can swipe it. 
Please raise your hand. Ashes, please help me. It's only 50 rands can buy for. We are supporting our, our social care ministry. Uh, take the ticket, give them the money. Please, we are only 28. I'm sure we can sell all of them now and ask for more, isn't it? Lighthouse is a very giving church. Uh, tell me when they are done. Just raise your hand. There's another hand there at the back. There's another one here. It's 50 rands only. Now this is the mama gaza. The mama gaza. Ow. Ninja and mama. You know, mama sick at the as paga yala la bendi. So we really appreciate you. Ma, thanks for coming. Are we dead? Oh, dead. Oh, I'm not going to go to the house. Do you still have more tickets? Mazana, please, let's buy all these tickets. There's, there's other hands there at the back. Let me tell you what they are fundraising for. They don't want to be dependent on the church budget to fund the social care ministry activities. Social care ministry activities, we've adopted a few homes. We've just adopted one home here in Dachafontein. We just go clean sometimes. We've adopted another home in Emma Plotini, there at Emma, uh, that we usually go and intervene and help. They also run projects where we organize food, organize clothes, so that when they need transport for, for doing all those things, when there's funerals in our church, they organize buckets of cakes, those type of things, so that that work can be done. Amen, Bazalan. So support. Suguma Mama Uswisa. Mama Uswisa is the boss in that area. She is a deacon <laughs> responsible for our social care ministry. And she's leading a group of volunteers who are doing this work. Amen, Bazalan. So, Nkulunkulan Busis, do we still have more tickets? How many are left? You can buy more than one Bazalwan and uh, bring the money to Mam Suisa. If you pay card, just swipe it after church, we'll be able to recognize it from with uh, 50 rands, Lawangele Ngobani's card, and then we'll transfer them accordingly to, to the team. Amen, Bazalwan. So, so what are you How many tickets are left? One. I one. Thank you very much. That the, the people that have been have taken the tickets, can you please fill in the small you can see that it's a tear off. Can you please fill in the small ticket and bring it back to me to church so that I know who took the ticket and how much I'm expecting? Oh yes. Yes. It's that easy, yes. Yeah. Yeah, because I didn't want to buy these tickets as if we don't have a church. Tell us, Shaili Zanda, one more time. Because part of the discipline we have to apply ourselves to, as me and my wife, is to is not to carry what Abba Zalwan, our church can carry. Amen. So, so that we can be able to use it as teachable moments for giving and uh, teachable moments for commitment in our church. And we do appreciate all of you who have uh, taken a ticket and bought those tickets. Nkulunkulu and Busise, may the good Lord richly bless you. Kela Shail Nkulunkulu, one more time. Like I was saying, we're in a year of great impact. Uh, a lot of impactful things are going to happen. I'm beginning to see a lot of Christians rising on their own and saying, Pastor, we have a view, we have a suggestion, this is what we are proposing. That's how Nkulunkulu is raising a lot of people to come with ideas. And I know this is the move of God. Amen. So we're in a year of impact. Nkulunkulu is impacting people's lives. No one is willing to hide. And we said when we were starting the message is this year that no more hiding. We're no longer hiding under tables. We're on top of the table now. Because the Bible says we are the light. We can't be under the table. So the light must be on top. See, Apollo is. Uh, so we are out there. Everybody can see us. Nainyoganyoga can't touch us. Because we are not connected to ESCO. We are connected to the Lord. Amen. So it's a year of impact. We are not hiding at work. We are not hiding at school. We are not hiding in the sports team. We are not hiding in politics. We are, we are everywhere. We are taking over. 
Because we know that wherever we are, there's going to be impactful results. Last second. We are not hiding in business. We are taking over in business. We are not hiding anywhere. We are not hiding in our schools. We are in the SGPs. We are everywhere. Because we are the people of God. We know. So today, last week we were talking about a peaceful church. A peaceful church. Today I want to escalate and elevate. And I need to indicate because I've started teaching on the fruit of the Spirit. Last week I was talking, on Wednesday I was talking about the fruit of love. I was giving a, an overview on the fruits. And then this Wednesday I'm talking about love more in detail as the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to be talking about the Holy Spirit gifts soon when we are done with the fruit. Uh, I've been working on my notes, breaking them into smaller chunks. We have extended our prayer time. It's now no longer from 6 to 7. We are doing 6 to half past 7. So we're asking others to make arrangements to be here. The reason why we've moved it to half past 7, we've recognized that these people are working in Joburg sometimes. By the time they come here, we're about to leave. So what we do, we use the first 30 minutes to do a generic prayer where we'll just go and go deeper in prayer. And then the second 30 minutes, we use it as guided prayer. That's where we strategically involve everybody, strategically according to prayer items, and then we lead them. Because we are aware that we are not at the same level of prayer, all of us, or of spirituality. So the second part, we are using it, we guide it. This is what we're praying for, and then we pray for those things. And then we lose, use the last 30 minutes to teach. Uh, that's why in the next few weeks, I'll be teaching about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and then after that, we'll touch on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and then after that, we'll announce the topics that we will be touching on, because we must deliberately teach, teach, and then we share notes at a later stage so that people can be able to follow. So I want to invite all of you. It's my wish that every Wednesday can be as full as this Sunday in our church so that we can pray together and be able to learn together and grow strategically together as a church. That's why this morning I want to talk about a loving church. Amen. Becoming a loving church. I'm sure our main topic is uh, an impactful church. So our subtopic is becoming a loving church. Because Jesus says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. He says, by so doing shall all men know that you are my disciples. They are not going to see you by what you wear. They are not going to see you by how you walk. But they are going to see you by how you behave towards one another. The Bible says in Antioch, when they saw the church behaving like Christ, they started calling them Christians. But the question is, can your community, can where the street where you live in, can in your estate can in your village people look at you and see that this is a Jesus person because you are full of love? We must be weary of how our family members who are eavesdropping on our conversations after church, what is it that they are deducing from those conversations? Do they deduce that eh, they are from a church and they really love each other in that church? Or do they deduce rumor mongering and hatefulness from you as and when you are regurgitating on the feedback from the fellowship that you have had in church. Because there are people who are listening to you, who are looking at you. But Jesus says, when they look at you, when you do the love thing, they shall know that you are my disciples. Because they will know that you are having an element which is called love and behaving like Jesus who is a lover of people. But the question is, when people are listening to conversations in a taxi of a Basonta and Lighthouse, do they feel, oh, this is a church I want to go to? Do they feel, or they feel, oh, yeah, there's a person they were talking about in that church, but you went, this and that. There's a, there's a mama in that church. We don't even know who that mama is. They were talking about this mama. Who, 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 who is bad news? Do they feel when they listen to our conversations, Abantuana Ekaya, when we, when we are engaging about how we are resonating with our church, do they feel that, yo, one day I want to also be a leader in the church, I want to also to be a volunteer in the church, or do they feel burdens 
Or we, aren't we the ones who have somehow made people not want to come to church? Because when they listen to the feedback, when they look at how hurt we are from the church experience, they feel they don't want to experience the things that we are already experiencing. But Jesus says by this, shall all men know that you are my disciples when you love one another. Hallelujah. Let's go to our main text. Because love is the core and the DNA of a Christian life. It is the core and the DNA of a Christian life. Let me tell you, we can do all these things. We can buy all the instruments. We can wear all these attires. We, we can have all these titles. But if we don't have love, the Bible says we are like a sounding gong. We are nothing. Because I tell you, no matter how organized, how big, how many, how fast growing we can be, if we are not growing in the area of love, we have not grown at all. We're still toddlers. The Lord is looking at us and he hears even our prayers, our prayers of toddlers, because they lack the essence and the real ingredient, which is love. That's why this morning, let's read the book of Hebrews chapter 10. I want us to read verse 24 to verse 25 only. I thought we would touch 26, but let's do Hebrews 10, verse 24 and 25. I want us to read it in two versions. We'll start by reading it in NIV, and then we'll also read it in NCV. Let us read. Is it there? It will be there. Magic from the backside of the church. <laughs> and let us consider how, he, how we may spare one another unto what love and good deeds. Not giving up, meeting together, as some are in a habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day of the Lord approaching. Can we read the scripture together, that NIV version together as a church? Let's read. And let us... Comma. <laughs> Comma. The Bible says the day of the Lord is approaching. As we see it, there are certain things that we must do. But I will explain in a jiffy. Let's read the NCV version of the same text. Is it there, my people? Yeah. It's simple now. The magic has just happened. Let us think. Let's read. Let us think about each other and help each other to show love and good deeds. You should not stay away from the church meetings as some are doing, but you should meet together and encourage each other. Do this even more as you see the day of the Lord approaching. Can we read it one more time? Let us think about each other and help each other to show love and do good deeds. You should not stay away from the church meetings as some are doing, but you should meet together and encourage each other. Do this even more as the day of the Lord is coming. As you see it coming, you must be more committed to church. As you see it, because there is a tendency, especially with the middle class communities, of thinking just because of their achievements, church is no longer that woke. You, you can even hear how they encourage their kids not to go to church and focus on studying. And so what about your books? The fight between a parent and a child over church and books. The, 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 the fight between a Christian and a pastor over church commitment and work commitment. Yet, the scripture says in verse 25, as the day of the Lord approaches, I'm sure all of us know that the day of the Lord is fast approaching now than ever before. Because this was 2,000 years ago when this text was written. We are 2,000 years later. Clearly, the day of the Lord is more closer than it was during that time. Meaning that the prioritization of fellowship, the prioritization of church commitment must be above any other thing. It must be above your school. It must be above your work. It must be above your family. It must be above any other thing. 
The prioritization of God should be above your community engagement. It should be above any other thing. Because the day of the Lord is fast approaching. I'm sure I'm not going to go to one. No, I've just read the scripture. Period. I had to just read the scripture. Uh, so, the decision is yours whether you're going to report, believe the report of the Lord or your own report, which is informed by secular nature and secular culture. Because the popular view is telling us that we must focus on our careers. It's amazing how people prioritize lunch over church. Have you noticed that we come to church for two hours at Lighthouse and then those who are, who are, who are, who are, who are volunteers, then they come earlier and they leave late. But if you can look at how much time you have just playing and doing nothing important, you still do have that time, but you would rather sacrifice the time of God to do important things than the time of play to do important things. Yet the Lord says, do not. But maybe the, the issue is, do, does our, our meeting together meet this criteria that the apostle is talking about? Because the criteria of the Hebrew writer, I believe it's Paul. Other people don't believe it's Paul. I don't care who it is. The Hebrew writer's agency is there is a type of environment that should exist in church. That environment should be an encouraging environment. That's why they say when you're in church, he says, come to church. Do not sacrifice church like others are not sacrificing their social life. So don't sacrifice church. The Bible is making that correlation between others who are gathering together for other things. Like if you can look at how politicians are so committed in door to doors. The Bible says the same way that the others are committed to door to doors. The same way like the people who are in social clubs are committed to a social club. They've got order, they've got money involved, they've got investments involved, they've got discipline involved. The Bible says have the same nature of discipline when it comes to commitment to his house. Because that's the type of commitment you must have in the house. But the Bible says we must then test whether is there an atmosphere of encouraging one another when we meet. Because the Bible says encourage one another when you meet. But let's go back to the scripture. The Bible says consider. Consider. It says let us consider. Maybe before we consider, we need to indicate that the Christian life is not a life of loners. The Lord deliberately says working together, loving together, doing good deeds together. There's that togetherness in the church life. There's that togetherness in the faith life. You will never be an effective Christian if you are a loner. It's not possible. You'll never be an effective Christian. No, I just touch and go. I don't want to bother. I don't want to be bothered. Let me tell you. When you are gravitating towards being a failed project of a Christian example. Because the Lord, Christian life is not a life to be lived as a loner. No Christian can be individualist. It's just like you can't be a Christian and think what you own is only for you. You can't be a Christian and think your success is only for you and your family. It's just me and my nucleus family. No. The Lord thinks broader than that. The Lord can't give you all this resource for just these three people. It's not possible. If you are beginning to live with just your nucleus family, you must know you have missed the mandate. You have missed the agenda of God. The agenda of God is broader than that. It's a communal agenda. Each time the Lord gives you a vision, each time the Lord gives you a resource, he expects that that resource must touch more people than yourself and your nucleus family. Each time the Lord gives you wisdom and knowledge, he does not expect that this knowledge must only affect you. That's why the Lord does not use buckets. He uses the rain, Baba. 
That bucket mentality must fall. When he was taking them out of capture, the bucket mentality is the mentality of capture because when you are captured, your resources are limited. But the mentality of getting out of Egypt and relying on God's reign, it's a mindset of abundance. It's a mindset of touching beyond just you, just beyond the two people that you are always hanging out with. Christianity is not a life to be lived alone. It's a life of encouraging others. It's a life of also being vulnerable to be encouraged by others. Because there's a tendency of those who are strong, powerful, they think it's only right when they encourage others. And they miss an opportunity of being strengthened and also being encouraged. That's why they become loners, rich loners who are not vulnerable to also be influenced by other people. That's why the Lord will always bring other people who are not as rich as you. You must be careful of reading some of these motivational books because they always say your network will determine your net worth without understanding that your network does not mean only rich people. Sometimes the Lord brings in your network a poor person who is wise. Don't you remember that in the Bible, Naaman, a rich man, a general of the army, well achieved, well decorated man, could not be helped by the generals, but he had to listen to the suggestions of a little girl for his leprosy to go away. So if you think, Namba na mama golf, Namba na mama PM, Namba na mama, Yo wa lo intes wena. Maybe the Lord has ordained some taxi driver who is wise. Listen to that Uber driver who's got wisdom. Maybe Ukunukul has ordained some coco. You know, as a leader at work, when I was leading the union, there's one man who helped me to be relevant to workers. Every time before the meeting start, came to me. This is a general work. Came to me. Comrade Cook. Uska bulela se khobo. Liha usi puta se tswana. It's fine. Because the workers, they relate with that. And I tell you, because of this man, who always, every, before every meeting, then I started to speak the language that these workers could hear. No one could beat me in elections. Not because I was smart, because Comrade Chosi gave me the tips. God gave me a network which was outside my net worth. A person who was not in my LSM, who don't live where I live, who don't drive where I drive. But because I dared to listen, because I understood that the Lord ordains a man for you. That's why even kings like David, they listen to prophets who are not that educated. Because the Lord ordains and he prepares your ears and he anoints them to listen to the right voices. Stop thinking that you're only going to listen to opera. Opera does not even know you. You know this new thing of people picking spiritual fathers, picking a spiritual father. A spiritual father that has credentials. Suddenly, the spiritual father rapes people. Because most you are not given to him by God. You picked him because he met a criteria. Christian life is not a life to be lived by a loner. Christians are like coals of fire. Together they glow, apart they grow cold. So it's important to stop being a loner. Start coming to church and deliberately greet people and say, my name is so-and-so. I've been coming to this church. You guys are not greeting me. <laughs> because you're not a loner. Because you are in Nicodemus all the time after church. You even know the timing. Nicodemus That's why you're going to grow cold alone. The Bible says consider. What does the word consider mean? It means think about it. 
it, it says, think carefully about it. Make it part of your agenda. Programmatize this issue of love and good deeds. Put the issue of love and good deeds on your agenda. Put it in the center of your efforts. Consider it as an important matter. Can I hear you say amen? amen. In other words, we study and implement the methods that will motivate another towards loving and good deeds. To consider is to study carefully. But the Bible says the first person, the first thing you must consider, you must consider the people. When you read the King James Version and the New King James Version, it says consider one another. Because sometimes there's people who think love can be implemented anyhow. No. Love is a well-packaged, well-thought intervention. When you want to love somebody and be loved with that person, you must study them carefully. So that your, your value proposition can be meaningful. That's what we call love language. The Bible says, yes, love is important. But we don't just love anyhow. We love each person. We love this one. Meaning that take time to understand them. Understand their love language. Understand their thinking. Understand where they come from. Because you may be finding that you are trying to assert yourself at a certain level only to find that this person is at a different level. So try to understand people. The issue of loving people is understanding. That's why as a church, we keep on repackaging our programs and our program intervention and our program mix. Because I'm sure the more we see our people, we see with a shh. God has not given us everybody. He has given us these ones. So whatever we do, we package it so that our love can be felt by these ones. We're not loving the next door people. We're loving these ones. That's why then the Bible talks about consideration. It talks about thoughtfulness. The game of love is a game of being thoughtful. Stop to saying in Jemina. If you want to marry a certain type of a person, you must understand that person. You must make a proposition that's going to augur well with that person. You must hit the mark in simple terms. You must make a sales pitch. <laughs> that's why I always tell ladies, stop telling people the things that are going to be horrific to them too early. There are people who should have married you. But you were too early to give your horror stories. Don't you know that trees are used for furniture? Trees are used to carry big things. But there's a stage where a tree cannot carry that level. Have you ever seen a bed when a building a nest on a very weak tree that's just been planted? You'll never see that. Even the beds know this truth. That I'm going to use this tree, but I must wait for it to get to a certain stage. There are certain stories you can tell people about you. But you must assess the level of the relationship you are in with these people. Because you are beginning to hate people because you are the one who told them things about you. Too early. Assess the, 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 the level of temperature of this relationship before you make certain proposals. There are proposals that can work after two months. That may not work in the first day. It's just like a person you are figure in an organization. You don't know it. You don't know the people, but you think now your suggestions... You must throw them at the same time. You must learn to package your suggestions in strategic positions and stages. Because relationships reach certain levels of being able to consume certain things. Imagine you've just joined the church and then we say, just because you're a millionaire, we know you. Most, sometimes a millionaire is, a, is an own person. Eh? You're a millionaire. We're about to build. You've just joined our church. Suddenly, we call you into your pastor's office. We're asking for 10 million. We're going to lose you. Because you probably hear, since you've run away from others who ask you for the same thing, unstrategically. 
That's why then the Bible says good deeds and love. Number one, require consideration. You must consider, a vibe, make an assessment. But my biggest message this morning is to tell you that Bazanan, we need to love one another. The Bible says, spare them up. Spare one another up with love, number one. To spare, it's a, it's a beautiful word. It talks about staring. To spare something, it talks about motivating. It talks about provoking, but the, the positive side of provocation. Because there's a provocation side. You know that provocation that makes you that's the type of provocation that the Bible is talking about when it says you must spare one another to love. The Bible says we need to do things that will make people want to love. We must not do things. We've already done things that made people to hate themselves, to hate us, to hate even our church. But now the proposal is that can we do things? Can we motivate people in such a way that they can start loving. There are a few areas that we must spare people towards. The first one, which is my intention as a pastor, I'm trying to spare you to love the Lord. I'm trying to motivate you, agitate you. I'm trying to mobilize you. I'm trying to give you high morale of doing things that will make you love the Lord the most. But it's also a responsibility of everyone who is a parent to spare your children to love the church. Stop making them hate church because of your approach each time you talk about church. I've seen it sometimes when I talk to my son. He's only three plus a few months old. When I say to him, let's go to the shops. He says, yes, daddy. And I say to him, no, we're going to church. And I say, no, daddy, why church? I say to him, we're going to church. After church, we're going to the shops. He says, yes, daddy. Let's start in the church. Because I'm trying to spare this boy to understand that church is important in this family. But the problem sometimes, how we pitch it, we make them hate it. How do you pitch God-loving environment in your home? <laughs> I remember when in, in Velcom, way back, we used to be adopted by a family when we were arranging a revival. We used to do these 10-day revivals as heavenly youth. So we went welcome in one family with my friend Togo Simbonani. And we are there, and Peggy, Peggy Maslang, may his soul rest in peace. We are there for a few days. So <laughs> the, the, the host, who's the head of the family, started doing things because there are these young people who are preaching the gospel, who are sleeping in his house. Each time we enter the house, he changes the channel, puts Jimmy Swag out there. You know, after two days of doing that thing, that woman was so angry. <laughs> so we picked it up with a, a, a chance. <laughs> we are causing havoc in that family. <laughs> we had to approach him and say, Timer, relax. generations, <laughs> man. You know, you're just a food. <laughs> and this woman was watching this thing. <laughs> and because it's, So you see how the pitch was going bad. To say the man is trying to spare the family to say, I wish all of you in this house. But he was doing it in a way that it was beginning to irritate the woman in the house. So the question is, what is it that we are doing not to spare the gospel, the people into the right direction towards God? Do you think your behavior, your conduct towards how you preached even the gospel are you making it attractive so that people can be inquisitive and want to know more about it? Are you living your life? Because sometimes when a Christian is not making it in life, not successful because of their own laziness, you make the gospel not attractive. What is it that can attract people to you, like really? Because Angijo, they must ask, who is helping you to make it? That's why a Christian must be a hard worker. Sometimes they must ask at work, man, to say, no, we want Mr. Matlango to tell us about his, his work, his values. What informs your values? And then you say, no, it's Jesus, it's in the Bible. I focus on God when I work. Then we have sold the Bible, we have sold the, the thing of God better. Number two, 
We need to spare one another to love and accept ourselves. I tell you, Bazalone, eh, the problem with the church sometimes is cheeky people in the church. You know those cheeky people who are making others feel good? They are not, they are not well-dressed. It's even worse. If you are like me, you are big in body. There are these people who just make you... <laughs> I was looking at, at Twitter the other day when Mr. Mashaba was here on Sunday. And then he posted a picture of him and me on, on Twitter. He says, hey, I was in this wonderful church, lighthouse. One evil person says, tell that man to lose weight. <laughs> that man is obese. <laughs> You know, I laughed when I looked at it. And I asked myself, if such a comment can happen to a person who comes to church. I understand those evil people. I'm sure they don't believe. To a certain extent, I said, okay, maybe the image is important. I must do more. <laughs> <laughs> but those things don't affect me that much, right? However, I can imagine if a person comes to church for the first time and they are so big. And... They feel good. You know, sometimes there are these plastic chairs in churches, which are very dangerous. They are about 52 rands, those churches. <laughs> and when you're a big guy, you know these, church, these chairs. <laughs> You've seen them before. <laughs> when you see it, you want to avoid it. <laughs> Imagine you are now there. There's this usher who does not get it. Say, la, la, la. Because they're not having, they're not having this thing that the Bible is saying, consider these people. Consider, consider. <laughs> their nature, their thinking. It's just like we've been briefing our guys by my camera to say, there's people, because sometimes you'll see a camera, you see a guy doing like this. So, I know we have a room that side. Before we hit a shot, the camera goes to a person. You can see with this person is not comfortable. Probably they don't want their crew to know they come to church. <laughs> so we had to brief our guys at the back to say, you must be weary of those things. You must be aware. That's why you have seen, if you have seen our pictures have changed on, on the internet, we only show our members only. Or the ones who are comfortable. They ask them, are you comfortable if it's online? Uh, your picture and the likes. So, <laughs> so those are, are some of the things. So, that's why we must spare one another to, towards help people to accept who they are. You can't say just because a, pepe, a person has some disability. Actually, accept. So we must spare one another to love. You you, you, you need to sort out your tongue. I know the Bible says you need to season it with salt. Before you say it, you must process it in your mind and ask, is it not going to offend the one I'm going to say it to? So we, and you, that's when we are sparing towards making people accept who they are. We must make people realize, but no, it's not doing, that's why like in Zwin, what we are doing, we are trying not to be too formal in how people should dress. But we're also trying to say, those who want to be formal, let them be formal. That's why once in a while I'm formal. Once in a while I'm just wearing my jeans. Or I ask Suisa to wear his jeans and his red shoes. <laughs> you know why we allow that? So that those who are like Suisa can say, hey, Those who are like me can say, okay. Those who are thin can also say, okay. Those who have cheese cup can... You know, because you are sparing people to accept who they are. Because love creates an atmosphere where we can accept people as they are. Because Jesus says to them, come as you are. Number three, we need to spare one another to love our enemies, to love other people. The Bible says, number one, we must love our neighbors. But the standard of loving somebody else, that's why we must spare one another to accept ourselves. Because the Bible says you can't if you fail to accept yourself, the chances are you are not going to love other people. And if you are doing like that, you must know there's a distortion. If you find yourself in a situation where you love other people more than you love yourself, that's beyond the standard of Scripture. Because the standard of Scripture says love your others as you love yourself. 
So meaning that you must love yourself first. Then when you have met that standard, then start loving other people the same way you love yourself. Do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. Number two, which is a difficult one, the Bible says you must love your enemies. You must love your enemies. You know why you love your enemies? You recognize that even though they are stupid and they are my enemies, they are still created by the image of God. Because there are certain fools we need to love, you know. Number one, you must accept it. Okay, this one is slim. My is stand. Eh? This person does not get it. And you know the Bible says they are dead in their spirit. So why would you hate a dead person? Should one be one be mingo usonda abafile? So those people who have chosen to be your enemies, don't be their enemy. Let it be only them who say you are their enemy. But when you see them as God's creatures. We need to love our families, Bazalwan. You can't be a Christian and you have somebody in your family that you hate. You must go and fix that thing. Because the Bible says you cannot, it says those who, can, who don't take care of their families, they are worse than evil people. You need to take care of the needs of your family members. I'm not saying to, do not be, I'm, so, I'm not saying be oblivious. Una ma charlatans pela in the families and sure we know them. We know the charlatans of our families, those who are just want to rip us off. They say they have needs, and then you give them your last money, but they go and buy a matagi amash and not use that money and use your money to drink, and then you see them taking pictures with bubblies. Ah, not talking about those things. I'm talking about the real needs in your family. You must be aware. That's why you must consider their situation. Be aware of their situation. You can't be a person, your family is reliant on food packs by other people, but they've never received a food pack from you. You are the first one to rush to say, I have a good government. Actually, this thing of families relying on government is not biblically coherent. Well, we do pay tax more than 45%, some of us. Mara, it's important. People are saying, what threshold is this? Ah, Puma. <laughs> Puma la Potswada. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that we need to spare one another towards loving our family members. There are these family members who have hurt us. We must go back and deliberately reconcile with them. You remember the, when we talked about peace last week? We must be peacemakers. We was alone. Number four, we must love God's creation. You can't have a dog, a cat, an animal in your house that is just mistreated. The dog wishes to have a dog more. Say, I wish I can. Your dog is having a very small chain. I guess Lencha. We let Lencha Guaco. You brought this animal in your house, but you don't take care of it. You need to love God's creation. It's just like having grass in your house, but it's not cut. You're not maintaining the lawn. Why did you bring the grass there and the tree there, but you don't care? You need to take care of God's nature. That's why the issues of ozone layer, the issues of environment, the issues of caring for nature becomes key there. Those are Christian values. So we must spare one another towards caring for nature, caring for the gardens. That's why before the Lord gave Adam the entire world, he gave him a garden. You need to check. Before you marry a guy, you must, ask, you must go and say, show me garden again. You must check if the car is clean. Because we must spare one another to caring for our properties. You can't be just breaking things all the time. You can't be a reckless person. You can't be a negligent person. That's why there's negligence policies in companies because people just break stuff. In church, it's even worse. People just enter, we've got a carpet, they don't even tintita their nyawas outside, they just enter with their grass in here, they take their chappies, put it under the seat, come on now. We need to care, we must spare one another to care, we must tell them, hey, top. That's why I always go outside and say, young people, pick up those papers. Actually, all of us, when we leave church, we must pick up the papers in the church. 
You can't say take your tissue out of your car and then just throw it there. I've seen some of you, you drink Coca-Cola as you leave the bottles outside the church. We, must spare, we are sparing you towards caring <laughs> for our property. You can't be misusing toilet paper. <laughs> misusing towels there. We are trying to have towels in our toilets. <laughs> Please take care of them. Pack it properly. Flush the toilet. There's a brush. Clean. We are sparing you towards loving the environment. Loving our facilities. Loving our homes. <laughs> Lastly, <laughs> we want to spare you to love God's work. We must give to the church, Barcelona. We are not going to be able to do the things we want to do. We want to want one of the most influential churches in East End. We want people to be saved. But if you can't even buy a 50 rand ticket for a raffle, when is watching, it's a life. Imagine a man of God is now selling tickets. Ticket? Ticket. Mara, I just wanted to demonstrate that it's possible for us to buy them. Perhaps our strategy of selling was not where it's supposed to be. So thank you very much for all of you who bought the tickets. May God bless you as you spare one another in love. I'll talk about good deeds the other time. Let's stand up on our feet. My, I, I'm out of time. Father, 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 sing to Jesus. Yeah, as we're about to leave, let me make a few announcements. The membership class is going to happen here in the main hall. Amen, Bazalan. Those of you who are attending the membership class is going to happen here in the hall. The water baptism that's going to happen immediately after this one is just going to be there between the two halls on the other side. I know there's many families who have put some chairs. Those of you who are coming to support. So we're asking for those who are going to be baptized, go and change into those clothes you are willing to see wet. Uh, and then we're going to baptize you, that side. And then immediately we'll start with our membership class at half past 11 here. So we'll baptize that side, then do our membership class from half past 11. I'm sure there's some tea and coffee. I don't know where they're going to locate Ugu Utlagwa Laba who are attending membership class. Mamkumalo. Where are you? Uh, so I'm sure they will announce, they will come and tell those who are attending membership class because we do some snack. Because we know that it's after church and membership class takes three hours. So they will do the snack while we are baptizing that site. And then at half past 11 we will start. It's a clean. I want to specifically invite you, Basalwane. Anybody? You know, I was thinking, who is actually singing? <laughs> who is actually singing? And I know that single people are people who have reached a stage where it's either they were married and they divorced, now they are single. They used to have partners, they are now widowed, now they are single. Abanye is people who have reached a certain age in life. I was thinking about women in particular to say, when do I think women consider themselves singing? That's why I, I thought maybe 21. I wanted to go 30, 25 upwards. Uh, because that's the target that we are having. Once we have proper conversations, that's why we've invited our sister Twasa, uh, our brother Lemon Piri. Pastor Lemon Piri is a psychology major. So he understands psychology of human beings very well articulates things very well. Twasa 
is a single Christian. Uh, she's in her 40s, I think, now. If And she's still singing, and she's living for God. So, there's other people who are singing as well. By virtue of, you find yourself being singing. Sometimes you're looking for a person. Sometimes you're not looking for a person. So, we want those people who have reached that particular milestone in life. That's about Kula Kuli. They're not kids. To join us. It's either they're still in their youth, they're above 25 or so, but they are now maturing. It's either they want to marry, but they're single, or they don't want to marry, but they're single. Because there's space for everyone in the house of God. Paul was one of the single people in the Bible. A very old single man. Jesus was one of the single young people because he died at 33. Eh? He was a single 33-year-old. He was still a youth according to South African standards. Uh, and many other men and women of God. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was married. But we see that when Jesus was dying, he asked John to, to take Mary. And then Mary lived with John until she died. Uh, because John was coming from an affluent family. Uh, and the likes. And then church history tells us that John died at the around 93. Was 93. Obviously he was single because of widow, being widowed or something like that. So you may have had a partner in the early time of your, of your relationship and then later you end up not having a partner. Sometimes you may feel good. Or it could be a question of you want to be encouraged by other single people. So we want to have a safe space here in church on the 26th to have conversations for single people. To, to say, how do you see... That's why we are saying... What's our topic? Our topic is... What's this topic? Isn't it? There's a word that we use before the word singing. We say constructively singing. Because we've seen a lot of people who are singing in society who are messing up society. They don't want to marry, but they live like they are married with many people who change every night. They are doing pickups in pubs, pickups in cinemas, pickups in restaurants, but they don't marry. But the Bible is telling us that if you have sexual desires, you must marry. So that's why then we want to have those conversations. How do we protect our singleness? How do we even prepare ourselves for marriage? Because I've seen Pastor, one of the pastors we've invited the other, she only married at 42. And she's going to have, a, yeah, Pastor Mancha, she's going to have her first child at 45. And it's going to be a healthy child. Because sometimes, because you were busy in life, there are those of you who are studying for a long time, focused on getting promotions, and then you did not think about this thing. Alema Fitwa, you can still marry. So why do you have those conversations to say everything is possible with God? So we're having that singles conversation. I'm asking that register. Invite everybody who's single. We want to inspire one another. That's why we've invited two single people, two people who understand these issues in a safe space here in church on the 26th. And we are not charging for it. We'll provide some, some nice things and have conversations. Can you do the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. We love you. Jesus. Jesus.